Um, moving into the regular board agenda. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Northfield Township um, Board and let's stand for an invocation and pledge. Dear God, we ask your wisdom as we deal with the items that we have before us tonight and we ask your uh, blessing on this uh, gathering and um, protect all of us as we travel home tonight. Amen. Okay, roll call vote, please. Roll call. Bellager. Here. Dockett. Here. Selena. Present. Chockley. Here. Manley. Here. Otto. Here. Pitt. Here. Okay, we're all here. Um, uh, you have the consent agenda here, and um, do we have any comments on that? Does anything need to be pulled out? So hearing nothing. nothing. Uh, the, the minutes and bills. Okay. Uh, I did not get a copy of the minutes. Uh, did anyone else? We the, have for the twenty eighth. Right. How did you get them? We do not have the the minutes from the twenty eighth oh, of well, February. That's what I'm, we have the minutes from the fourteenth of February. Well, that, and that's why I'm asking because yeah. we should have the twenty eighth. Right, there was a power failure, um, so there was some inability. Okay, I, okay. I, I just want to make sure we're not okay in them because I never read them. Right, so I didn't read th them That's either. all I was, and okay. uh, the bills, yes, I have some questions on the bills. Okay, we'll put those um, hmm, at 11. Okay. Okay. Are we just approving the minutes now, or? Well, he didn't pull those. Do you, are you pulling out February 14th minutes, or just the 28th, well, which we don't have? Uh, well, yeah, I have, I have these. Okay, so we are approving the minutes for, for as this. a consent agenda for the 14th. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a, uh, the balance of the agenda here. Do I have a motion to adopt it? I'll make the motion to adopt the February 14th minutes. Okay. Um, okay, we have a motion uh, by auto support by Chick. Any discussion? Yeah, I've got a, just a question about the minutes. Go ahead. Um, on the uh, second page, page two, there's a vote for uh, uh, right at the top here, right underneath the department heads reports. And there was a vote that it mentions that uh, Doggett was absent. I was kind of curious if he was at the meeting, but he was absent for that vote. Was it possible that perhaps the vote could have waited for him to return from wherever, wherever he was absent from? That's just a curious question. I was not present at this meeting myself. I think there was a lot of video watching over that vote. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, that would probably be it. Okay, so my question is why wasn't uh, the vote postponed or maybe it, maybe there was no recess, a recess should have been called perhaps? Just well, a thought. Well, there was, was he had a quorum. Was it he walking right. out? Okay. Where, what did she say? Where was I? Yeah. You were walking out as we were voting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I went to the restroom, but. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I'm just asking why couldn't the vote wait, that's all. <laughs> okay. Because it was me. He going left out. the room. Do we have That's any what? other um, If it would have been one of them, Mr. Dockett. Okay. Mr. Dockett. Well, I'm just Thank telling you. the facts. Okay. The facts, the facts. Do we have any more comments about the minutes? Okay. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone roll, roll call vote on the minutes, please. Okay, roll call vote. Bellager. Yes. Dockett. No. Zelenek. Yes. Shockley? Yes. Manley? Yes. Otto? Yes. Chick? Yes. Okay, we have the balance of the agenda before you. Can I have a motion to adopt it? I'll move. I support. Okay, motion by Chockley, support by Bellager. 
Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, now we have an opportunity for call to the public. Anyone um, like to speak to us at this point? Same rules, three minutes, name, address. We'll yeah. skip the last. <laughs> yep. Dale Brewer, 11548 East Shore Drive, Whitmore Lake. Um, just a comment on your motorized path. Uh, as you start to uh, review these decisions to alter it, if I recall, you just said that there's a grant from the state, which was approximately $600,000. If you alter the specifications of the project, you would jeopardize having to return that $600,000 to the state. So therefore, before you continue to make any substantial changes in it, please, 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 for your own benefit, to consult with your attorney and see if it's even possible in your engineer. Uh, once you have a grant, you have to comply 100% with that grant as it was awarded to you, or you are subject to fines and or total refund. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, Susie Winkowski, 5558 Helner Road. Um, during the campaign, several of you stated that you would uh, make more of an effort to answer questions from the public at the meeting, so I was happy to see that uh, there was some effort uh, made with that this evening. Um, and I have a question. Uh, I'm very genuinely and seriously interested in what each and every one of you think the value of the call to the public is. What is the value of public participation through attending the meetings, through contacting the trustees, through telephone calls or emails? What exactly is the point? In, in your view. With regard to the issue of hiring a township manager, there was a very large response from the public. 89% of the members of the public that spoke at the meeting or wrote to the trustees were not in favor of hiring a township manager. This didn't seem to factor into your decision making at all. Do we matter? Is there a point for what this ritual that we're going through right now? Uh, it seems to me that often the folks who are involved and speak at these meetings are dismissed as special interest groups or dismissed as being mere residents who couldn't possibly understand the complexity of these issues. Both of those are insulting. Why is it that when there's landowners that want to make a big profit from selling their property to developers, they're not considered a special interest group? It only seems to be the ones that have a different opinion that are relegated that distinction. It's very discouraging. You are elected to represent us. So again, I really am truly curious what you think the point of this is. Regarding hiring a township manager, I think the decision was rushed into without really evaluating the job that Howard did, without evaluating whether it was worth the money, without creating a better job description or a means to review the job performance of, of that person. Facts and opinions are what should inform your decision. There seems to be very little interest in, ex in truly exploring this issue in any ma meaningful way, except perhaps by uh, Lenore. You can't just operate on your feelings and opinions. This displays a real lack of professionalism. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. That's fine. Oh, 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 wait, you're on the, you're actually on the agenda. <laughs> okay, no, we'll, we won't miss you. Okay, does anyone else want to speak? David Gordon, 5558 Helena Road. I'm going to try to talk fast because there's only three minutes. Um, at the last meeting on the 28th, the trustees, the four trustees, voted to begin the process of hiring a township manager over the objections of the supervisor, clerk, and treasurer, who, according to state statute, are actually tasked with managing the township. <clears throat> I believe this is going to cost uh, a lot of money, and it's going to be a huge waste of tax dollars. 
and here are my reasons. Uh, number one, you ignored the pleas of the supervisor to give her a chance to do the job. You failed to address the fact that 97% of all the townships in the state run without a manager. You disrespected the public input, as the previous speaker said, when you had 61 emails that came in and 54 of them were against having a manager. I don't know how you could do that. Your arguments here at the meetings and that I've seen on Facebook in favor of a manager are opinions masquerading as facts. You never did a professional performance review of the manager, and if you did, I think you should post it online so the residents can see it. There is nothing on the website about the fact that you're considering hiring another manager, that the previous manager left. This is what you need to do to be proactive in terms of having the public informed. You can't blame them for being in, uninformed and then not do your utmost to try to inform them. I haven't seen any analysis of the performance of Mr. Fink. How can, you, how can you hire somebody else to do the job if you haven't defined what the job is and you haven't assessed whether the last person did the job well or not? Some people think he did a great job. I think he did a lousy job. Who's right? It's not a matter of opinion. Let's look at some numbers. Let's look at some, uh, some facts, some evidence. You claim that he saved the township money and that possibly the new manager is going to save us some money. What did the last guy save us? We, we ought to know what he saved us. Where are those numbers? By my figuring, he cost a million dollars to the township. And if he did save money in terms of insurance or something else, what's left for the new manager to save? Managers usually are around for two to four years. That's how the war system works. They come in, they work in a small little township like this, and they move on to a bigger township with a bigger salary. That's what you're looking at by hiring another manager, is having somebody here for a short time, have their learning curve, push an agenda that makes them look good so they can get out for more money, which is exactly what Mr. Fink did. This is a big decision, and I would urge you to involve the public. I think you ought to send out a postcard like Lenore did to the community and have a public forum and a discussion about this. You can inform the public of what your opinions are. Maybe we can get some facts involved. Because during your campaign, and I still have the literature right here, these were promises of respecting the residents and respecting the tax dollars. So this is your opportunity to do precisely that, and I would encourage you to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goyne. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one, um, we'll move to, oh, this is not my agenda. We usually have um, opportunity to respond at this point. Uh, does anyone have any comments in response to uh, the call to the public? Ms. Bellager. Yeah, a couple things I'd like to respond. Let's see. Was uh, in reverse order, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gordon, uh, I'd like to know how we feel about things, how we came to conclusions that we made regarding the manager issue. Um, my, um, after much um, study of this and concern and listening to a lot of uh, public comment as, as well as um, just, you know, other board member comments, public comment, just gathering information and, and s seeing how this works together. Um, it came, it came to, I came to realize that when people ran for these positions that we now have a, you know, we, all of us ran at, for public uh, functionaries for, as representatives, the three officer positions were part-time and they were known as part-time positions to those that decided to throw their hat in the ring and run for public office. This is very important. You have people up here that would not have ran for those positions if they were full-time positions. And you have people that would have ran if they were full-time positions that did not run because these positions were only part-time with you know, substantially less compensation, meaning they could not make a living on the meager 12 and a half uh, grand that they're getting as a part-time job. If these were full-time jobs, other candidates would have stepped up to the plate and said, hey, I'd like to give this a try because I can make a living at this and make, be a part of the community, you know, offer their services and, and talents to the community. So when I got to realize that perspective of it, 
it was like yeah, that's that's the only fair way to, to go with it if before the election we were going to abandon the manager model then that's fine you know that would have been fine people wouldn't abandon the manager model and have full-time positions back to full-time positions for these for the uh, treasurer clerk and uh, supervisor you would have got a lot different pool of people candidates running some people like i said would not have run because i already know that a couple of the board members said they wanted only part-time they don't want to go full-time so this is very very important i think that's only fair to everybody involved because like i say you got candidates that would have jumped on jumped up to this opportunity of being a public functionary had it been full-time position that they were aware of it was going to be full-time position going into it so that's my key and you know obviously there's there's other things there's dynamics and there's um there's life the reality of life and dynamics and so forth that do have to be factored in sometimes you can't put a number of value or a quantity on those but they play a factor and so in my decision of going for the manager at this point, this is, this is the reasons why. I'm not opposed to perhaps changing the format of the government. It could be done, you know, but it, at this time, this is what needs to be done, in my opinion and perspective. And after much deliberation and thought, that's how I came to that conclusion. But I do thank you for, for asking. I do thank you for being here, and I do think that it's very important also it's it's a difficult thing it's not simple it's not as simply as oh we're going to save 50 grand because the numbers are vague as well and the details and depth of this issue is many layers and one thing to remember we're not going to be hiring another howard you know that can be good that could be bad depending on those that liked howard and those that didn't the dynamics are part of the game as well but thank you so much Ms. Otto. Um, I wanted to address the statistics. So out of the 2,000 postcards that went out, there were 22 responses. And that's le that is um, approximately 1.1% of the 2,000 that responded. Out of the 6,300 uh, 6, voters, there were in the last presidential election, we had 4,600 that actually voted. That is 1%, if you said there were 64 emails, that's 1% of the voters that responded. That's why when I listen to what people said, I read what people said, and for three months we had discussion and feedback on the township manager. Based on those statistics, it wasn't enough for me to change my mind. 1% of the population is not an, enough for me to change my mind. And out of those individuals that responded, not 100% of them were against it. There were some that were for it. 54 to 7. It's, it's okay. still, okay. but 89% of those who responded, it's still 1% of the community. The other 99% did not respond. But Mr. Dock. I remember David Gordon was on this board. David Gordon listened to nobody. Him and all the rest of the Northfield neighbors that were on this board eight years ago. I said, eight years ago, 12, 12 years ago. It was pitiful. So I don't, I, I, I just can't believe that David can get up with a straight face and talk like he did. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Ms. Chick. I just wanted to respond to a couple of questions that did come up. Um, as far as a performance review for the township manager, he's not an elected official. He is a hired uh, staff member. We wouldn't advertise anybody else that's hired down in the public or in the office's performance review. It's a personnel issue. Um, the other is there. Are, there is a job description, and uh, we've had it for a long time. We've had it when uh, Mr. Fink was um, township manager. We do have one now, um, and there has uh, and, the, and 
as Jackie said, it's been a discussion for more than a couple of months, so this was not a quick decision. We did listen to a lot of people on both sides of the issue, and um, I think that was it. Okay. I guess I would have a comment also. Um, when, it's, when the structure's set up the way it is, um, it really does eliminate the option f for um, the best people to um, run for office. Um, and uh, the, the, the full range of people to run for office because now you've, you have eliminated the people that needed a full-time job to do it. And you have eliminated, if in the other way, um, the people who could have uh, done it as part-time. And so that's a deficiency, I think. You know, we don't have the full range of people running who could run. And um, I voted uh, not to get a township manager um, because I saw the cost of it. And um, when I thought of $100,000 a year and I thought of what kind of projects, what kind of things we could do to serve the public in the township with all those dollars that we would be spending on a township manager, um, where a lot of us in the office could pick up that, um, I, I didn't feel like I could justify it. Um, money gets matched 50-50. So if we wanted to do some road improvements with $50,000 or $100,000 of what it costs to get a township manager, it's doubled. We could get a lot done with that. If we applied for grants, we could get that doubled, or sometimes even tripled for that if we wanted to do um, you know, some projects down in the community park. So it was an economic decision because I also didn't see where we were gonna lose any momentum by not having a township manager, at least for a time. And um, I thought it was an opportunity to, um, to kind of have things settle down in the office. Uh, morale has been good in the office, and we've started to make a lot of improvements in the office. I've been in there every day, most all the day, except for when I'm gone for meetings. So it's, it's been, um, it's been a really good opportunity to see what it's like here at the township and, uh, and to, and to kind of see where we can go here um, to improve things. Yes, we have some challenges because there's a lot of us new, uh, but we're all learning pretty quickly. And um, I appreciate the public coming out and giving uh, their input. I think that's very important. And um, if you do surveys, you don't ask everybody. Scientific surveys do not ask everybody. So, you know, even if you get 1% or 2%, as long as you've asked a representative group, you can get good feedback coming back. So, um, I'm not saying that the postcard was a scientific survey, uh, but we, um, we do have people that are engaged in, in looking at the township, and I do appreciate when they come in and speak, and I do appreciate all of you who've come in tonight. So we need to move on here. It's getting oh. really long. I, oh. I need to make some comments, okay, go please. Ahead, um, first of all, I did run on a campaign to inform the people and save tax dollars. I sent the postcard just to do that, to let people know what I was thinking, and I wanted to invite people to come and tell me, either through phone calls, emails, to the board meetings, what they're thinking. It was not a survey. It was not intended. It was to inform and invite people to tell us what they were thinking. I, I appreciate everyone who took the time and the courage to come forth and express their opinion. It is not always easy to express your opinion, and I was, I'm very thankful for everybody who did that. I do value the public input. As I said, I ran on to keep people informed and to get their input. That was in, uh, is the reasons I ran. So again, I thank everyone. I do have two other comments not related to the township manager. One is, I think we really need to put on our agenda or work to improve the sound system here, as well as the technical issue that we ran across. I think this is unacceptable, and we need to um, put resources in fixing that. The other one is, when we go forward and do grants, I think one thing we should do, and I'm not sure we did this on this grant, is I think we should do an estimate of what it would cost without the grant. So we have a baseline to know the costs going forward. Now, we may not have put in a eight-foot path. We may not have torn up other parts of the path, but I think it would be very good to say, what if we did it ourselves? 
what would it cost us? So we have some sort of baseline. I'm not sure if that was done. Um, that okay. is my comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Manley, sure. Okay, sorry. Really quick. Mm -hmm. um, just to address your questions, you know, yes, I did listen to the people. That's what I ran on that I will be here to speak for you. So I did take in everybody's input, the emails, the phone calls. And I definitely appreciate that. And as far as how I came to my decision, you know, I was against the manager, was through my own research, my own phone calls, my own working at the township, working under a supervisor. I've been in both situations, talking to people, numerous phone calls. So, you know, I, I did my homework and I came to my decision and, you know, listened to the people also. So that's it on that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to reports. Uh, department head reports. I guess we'll start with um, Mr. Wagner. I don't know if anybody has any questions on either police or fire report, but I would like a little bit of feedback from the board <coughs> on the uh, status of the Darling Curtis property. If the board would like me to move forward with uh, burning that and, and the reason yes. I say that is it's gonna <laughs> yes. there will be a cost to the township uh, at excavating and removing and re returning it to a level surface um, which isn't near the cost of what it would be to demolish it but um, it, it, and I, I saw a lot of heads shaking yes and not many I didn't see any shaking no so if that's the case then we'll go ahead and yeah. I mean, do you have a cost estimate that you could give us either way, both ways? So to demolish it, I would say without burning it, it would be between ten and 15000 right. okay. and so, And then restoration would be significantly less than that. I would, I'm just guessing five to 7000 5000 hmm. So, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and move forward. Are there That's any questions so on either board report? Um, I do, but um, oh, let's do Ms. Elmack first. Um, I know you said you were going to have an MDOT project meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so could you give us a little update on that? <laughs> um, I did meet with MDOT today, and as, you know, trying to keep up with the ongoing different hurdles that we're running into all of you saw my email two or three weeks ago with my frustration with MDOT deciding to close the six mile road bridge without <coughs> talking to any any of the emergency responders which is why we had the meeting today they are going to end up closing the six mile road bridge for probably two and a half months around starting around June 4th until about September Fourth or June 15th until about September 4th. Those are key dates as it relates to the school. School will be out at that time. Um, and the only good thing that will come of this is that the bridge will be replaced a lot quicker and that the territorial road bridge should be complete before they completely close the six mile road bridge. Um, even as late today, we're still running into additional issues um, with uh, the Six Mile Road um, horseshoe drain. The Washtenaw County Road Commission, as of today, has limited that to 10 tons. That's a significant issue for fire trucks. Um, and I don't even know how we're going to address that yet just because we got the information late today. And I'm not even sure which drain it is, whether it's the one by the golf course or the one closer to Edmond Street, um, which, which one of those drains that they're limited at to 10 tons. So there's, a, there's that. They're going to start closing ramps for 30 to 60 day period. So it's just going to be an ongoing daily issue for us to check and see how we're going to respond to different areas of the township now having said that i've already talked to the surrounding departments and they're certainly willing to step in and help where needed um i i i don't like what's going on i understand they did explain very well the reason and they don't have a choice but to close completely the six mile road bridge there is no other 
way to construct that bridge without closing it completely um, so I guess if you're we, we try to keep these posts up on Facebook and Nixle so and the, I know the township is putting it out on their web page also so if you want updates to what's going on with these bridges and roads and ramps just stay close to that and uh, we'll update it it actually starts tomorrow morning with Barker Road mm -hmm. being closed eastbound uh, for the next three days and then the westbound lane will be closed periodically at night um, so and, and we look at it different for emergency response at getting to emergencies we don't worry so much about getting back so for that one westbound Barker Road will remain open um, except for periodic times at night when they will flag it and if they see an emergency vehicle they'll obviously flag us through um, but it's about to get really 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 uh, frustrating for a lot of the motoring public and we're just going to ask for patience um, starting in about the middle of April probably well into August and I also ask questions for those of you that are with Kiwanis on how it's going to affect the parade and run and I don't I think the parade is going to be fine <clears throat> I think the run may be a challenge to uh, have the 10k come all the way around the lake because they don't know where the status of eight mile road bridge will be when it comes to July 1st so just we're, we're we're trying to stay up with it and we will keep sending out the information as we get it um, but just we're all going to need to have patience Thank you. Um, Ms. Chick. Um, I'm back to the Darling Curtis properly. I know that um, there was, uh, was there contaminants or anything else? Is it ready to burn? I know you were going to take out uh, no, something. No, the asbestos has been removed. Okay. Uh, the, the gas has been cut. The sewer has been cut. The uh, gas has been cut. So, no, it's, it should be ready to go. Okay. Um, Ms. Otto. So, um, Bill, in regards to um, the 4th of July activities, um, I know I've touched base with you on that. Um, do you think that we should just have a plan B? I think we need to, for the run, we need to have a plan B. Okay. Okay. Any more? Um, the, the 5K will be fine. The, the 10K going around the lake, I think we should have a, an, a plan B for. Okay. Okay, Ms. Bellager. Um, I had a question about the Darlene Curtis about the demo of that uh, you're going to go ahead and use as a training and then afterwards there's some cleanup that has to uh, happen like you said to turn that back into a, a lot you know uh, you know clean it up and so forth what is that expected to cost and will we get bids on for that or how will we go about that um, we, we actually did get a bid to demolish it completely probably a year ago um, we have not gotten a bid for the cleanup of it but we we should we we can do that we'll get two or three bids for it and i'm just estimating five to seven thousand um, dollars at that point it's basically removing the foundation and whatever's left over after after it's burned completely down but this will be a good training exercise oh this there's planned? nothing better for oh, fire departments <laughs> than actual in my opinion live fire trainings great thanks okay great mr dockett uh, is it costing us more to burn it down than it would to just call, no, it, it, call and have it? No, it'll it'll remote. save money by burning it down. That's why p people try to have them okay. burned down. Uh, 146 overtime hours in the police department. How, how do you feel about that, Bill? I don't like it. Okay. And that's why I've got a couple of uh, other items on the agenda to try to address that tonight. Okay. Okay, any more? All right, thank you. Chief Wagner. Okay, next we have um, the water pollution control facility. Does anyone have any questions about wastewater treatment for um, either Mr. Hardesty or Mr. Willis? Seeing no one. Okay, we'll move on to the next report. Um, um, Ms. Averill was not feeling well tonight, so I said, please go ahead home and uh, feel better so she's not here if any of you have any questions about her report feel free to give her a call and then we have next uh, planning commission report well oh, the planning commission did not meet okay thank you parks and rec 
Um, I uh, provided a uh, copy of the minutes uh, to all the board members uh, when I arrived uh, today. There's two things that seem to be kind of uh, on here that caught my attention. It appears as though that, um, and maybe uh, Mr. S Mr. Stoyer may be able to add to this, it appears that they're going to try to cut or reduce the cost of the rubbish removal at the Bark Park. It looks like there's some work in that direction. Um, another um, uh, point was that I understand that um, regarding property acquisition, I guess that uh, the Township Board had contacted uh, the Parks and Rec Board concerning possibly funds coming out of the Parks and, and Rec's budget to pay for the um, properties that are um, behind this building. What do you call those? The, some kind of garden? Summer homes, okay. That was also mentioned in here. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for actually the Parks and Rec Board and I'll be meeting with them, I believe this Thursday, regarding a tree that appears to be, they're removing a tree perhaps at the, uh, the, <coughs> new, um, the, the, the new park. So I had some questions on that that I need to answer yet. That's all I really see on here. Okay, is that all? Okay, moving, moving on to the next uh, report. We have a financial report. Um, Treasurer Zelnock prepared for us. So this is a report to um, satisfy the requirements of Public Act 20 as of 1943 as amended. So I put this report together looking at other areas, um, how they had, to, you know, how they're displaying where the funds are of the township. So I'm not sure, I didn't see anything that's been done in the past as a format, so I kind of created my own based on what I've seen in um, like Washtenaw County and other township. Um, so are there any questions? Mr. Dockett. Uh, the top line are a wastewater treatment plant, First National Bank, one million, one hundred seventy-seven thousand five hundred sixty-five interest rate zero point one zero. When I get my bank statement, it shows how much I got in interest. Would you would you mind if, if we're going to have this regularly that we put down? I can how, I can what, add the calc. What, what kind of interest we're incurring? Yeah, I can do that. And um. and. Uh, and I, th then the next line under says zero coupon. I guess that's zero. What does that mean? So the zero coupon means that it's when it comes in maturity, you're actually we're going to actually get paid, and that would be a forty thousand dollar payoff at maturity okay. of two thousand and nineteen. I wouldn't mind having that in there. Yeah. The, the next up. one down is only thirty five thousand. Fifty-six dollars, but they get a point zero seven five. Wouldn't it be nice to have zero point seven five up in the one million one hundred seventy-seven thousand? That is correct. Um, that's because it's a two-year maturity, oh. and the one before is a six-month maturity. Um, okay. I am a little concerned about having all our investments pretty much in one bank. All investments what? In one bank, okay. other than the Morgan Stanley. So when it comes due. We will be looking to diversify where our investments are, okay. as far and as that. And we need to work. And so we need to work with on, on the wastewater treatment plant because out of that um, monies, about 57 percent is really for the wastewater treatment, and Seven Mile in North Territorial makes up 43 percent. So we need to look at the maturity of the um, sewer for North Territorial and Seven Mile because then we could go into a longer term investment. And uh, we need to work with the wastewater treatment plant and look at their cash flow to see if we can do a longer term investment with them. But I am concerned about having everything at one bank. Uh, do, do we actually have 8493000 You actually had that money as of the end of February. Do you understand that the checking is any point in time? The tax um, value of the $3.1 million will be dispersed and that will, should go down to zero. So it's a point in time to show us for the checking of where we are, but to let you know where your monies are. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, go sure. ahead, Ms. Otto. 
Uh, so the percentage between Seven Mile and uh, the water treatment plant was what? 57% um, for the wastewater treatment. Okay. That would, um, comes out to about $709,000. And then there's 43% between North Territorial, which is the bulk of it. It's 37%. And then 7% for Seven Mile. So North Territorial is about 441000 And then Seven Mile is about 880. Okay. 88000 So if I got it right, Mr. Doctor, you'd like to see the interest earned up until that point. Well, I, I just thought it might be nice yeah, to it, that, I can that, uh, I can get so that data. I mean, if we're going to put all these figures on. <laughs> that's okay. That, and, you know, that's why I just put it out there to see what people would like. And do you understand that the interest is only earned at maturity, but I can give you a running, and if we were to cash it in for whatever reason, then the interest wouldn't actually be earned. Well, you're doing better than we ever had, in my opinion, on this, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item is the supervisor's report, and I'm not going to go through this unless anyone has some questions of me. I'm going through it. Mr. Dockett. Okay, I read the supervisor's report. Give me a couple of minutes here, folks. Uh, three paragraphs. In three paragraphs, this is what the supervisor said. Our, uh, the township staffing levels are not adequate. The township employees workload is abusive. The township staff uh, confidence is low. The township needs a good boost to the morals of the town. The township will be losing staff if, if it's something isn't done soon. The township needs to lock, to, to lock, excuse me, to look at better compensation. The township does nothing to help our staff handle the workload. The township needs regular office hours for the zoning department and the building officials. The superintendent said, the supervisor said that the township uh, is uh, operating on a shoestring. Well, the shoestring happens to be $1.28 million. So I hope uh, things are not as bad as the supervisor thinks they are, according to her first three paragraphs. Of her, per, of her, of her uh, report. Did you have a question, Mr. Dockett? No, but it sure, it, it sure you, makes me. You did make up a sure lot of that. It sure buns me, huh? You did make up a lot of that, or no? I didn't make up in, a bit of it. I can, I can read it to everyone if you're interested. Well, go but, right ahead. Read um, it, Miss Belliger. Go ahead. Read it. Read it. I, I um, I did read through here. I, I only real complaint that I can I mean it's I think it's a tone that that's all I don't, I don't want to be I'm not wanting to pick on anybody but it just kind of when I read it it kind of almost said like hey you guys in the office you guys have every right to be disgruntled and I just don't I think we have a great office staff and yes yeah. there's tough days and some of the people are hustling and, and bustling and working very hard but the overall tone almost seemed to encourage a, a feeling of being disgruntled and that that is something that I just was a little concerned with with that feeling to what was written the way things were worded and the choice of the, some of the language um, yeah I'm sure there's some things that could be done to make world a little easier for people in the office I can I can understand that but the tone here I think was just could perhaps be harmful as opposed to turn into a beneficial I guess that's okay. all. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay. I'll just I'll just let the public read my report uh, online and um, and come to their own conclusions. Well, I do um, have one more question. When c when does the DDA meet and the downtown planning group meet and where? The DDA is going to meet March fifteenth here at seven p.m. Okay. and the downtown planning group will be meeting March twenty seventh here at seven p.m. Uh, the next day we'll be having a presentation in this room uh, for the Board of Trustees of the, um, the North Village project. And that will be uh, kind of a planning, joint planning uh, Board of Trustees meeting. So it'll be pretty much the same material um, that would be uh, talked about at the Downtown Planning Group on Monday the 27th. 
Great. Uh, Thank you so much. That is an open um, meeting. So in the interest of time, if we have no more questions, I'm going to move on here. And um, I thank you all out there for reading my uh, report. And um, it's my opinion. And um, I've had a great opportunity to spend some time in the office so, um, and, and share that perspective with you all. OK, uh, sewer service policy, Mr. Rubel. Thank you for your patience for being with us. Um, the, the sewer capacity uh, issue has been on off and on, uh, more, more often and on than uh, we would like it to be, I suppose. But uh, here we are with another presentation on what our situation is. Go ahead. Boy, this is a complex subject, and uh, we're probably running behind. I'll go through it probably fairly quickly and try to it, double back. This questions. is an important subject, mm -hmm. so just take your time. It is. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just summarize, uh, I think, the material that you have in front of you. I do have extra copies if uh, you don't have that package. But uh, just by way of background, your wastewater treatment plant, I believe, dates back to 1961, uh, early 60s at least. It was expanded numerous times as uh, the township acquired the uh, plant. As the township grew, uh, the plant was expanded through a number of... Uh, projects that's pretty typical uh, you don't build a, a plant for the ultimate size you expand it as as you need to uh, the current capacity of of the plant and that's expressed as like an average flow is 1.3 million gallons per day that it can treat and the records that i see show that on an average day you treat about 700,000 gallons per day now so on the surface it would look like things are in, in pretty good shape. Uh, most days things run very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at a treatment plant, you also need um, to look at how it performs during wet weather. Excuse me, Mr. Um, Rubel. Um, Jerry, could you close those doors? Somebody's out there. We cannot close them. Okay, well, then tell them to move over or something. So Jerry. Not, leave, leave one of them open and, okay, just one leave open. one of them open then. Open meeting. Yeah, but we can tell the people to not be noisy out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Rubel. So, so during dry weather, uh, your, your plant treats the demand quite well. Uh, it, the plant is older, like many older plants and sewer systems, uh, but during wet weather, the flows uh, increase very strongly. Uh, rainwater, groundwater find their way into the... Uh, into the system and the plant uh, struggles uh, during very large events to uh, effectively and, and completely treat the water. Uh, at times, uh, processes are bypassed. Not every, every storm, not every day, but uh, more than we'd like to see that those processes are bypassed and uh, those are not permissible by your permit. The permit requires you to fully treat that wastewater. So you haven't had any actions against you yet, but uh, uh, luckily, but uh, that is something that you need to be aware of, that we have to, uh, have to treat that fully. Um, as far as on page two or the next page, kind of a summary of, of where you are with rates, just uh, again, by way of summary, uh, rates cover both uh, the operation and maintenance of the facility as well as paying any, any debt service. Uh, loans that you have outstanding generally are all paid through uh, the quarterly bills. And you do periodically update uh, your rates. You last did that in 2014. So at some point in the next couple of years, you, you, you definitely want to take a look at your rates. I have one question. Right now, go Pri ahead. Prior to that, though, when was the last time that we raised our Boy, rates? Boy, that was a long time. I think it was 10 years or so. Okay. I just wanted that 12. out there. Okay. Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great point. It had been a long time. Um, long time. Uh, you, there are also connection fees, or uh, they're also called system development charges that uh, are charged to new connections. Uh, we've talked a little bit about that in an earlier discussion. Um, those generally are paid to reflect the value of the sewer and the treatment plant that a new developer new development is 
using or, or claiming. The people that have been there before have financed all the infrastructure that date, so the connection fee goes to pay for a prorated amount of that infrastructure. Uh, in 2014, does we the did old, Does the older part of the uh, system have to pay extra too? I, I'm sorry? Well, you said it's for the new, the new place to, to connection fees. Yeah, yeah new. But new connection the, fees. if you're in the old system, if it goes up like it's right now, it's thirty-five fifty. Yeah. If it went up to seven, does everybody pay that? Even the people on the old system. A connection fee is only for a a a, phys a new physical connection. Okay, but but it would be at at that price, regardless of where you're at on the sewer. Oh yeah, yeah. location of the sewer does not matter. Okay. Uh, north, south, east, west, you pay the same amount. Yep. Great question. Mm -hmm. I I will just state in the 2014 study we looked at the connection fees, and uh, the the maximum amount that we thought you could charge and, and defend that fee was between $57 and $5,900. The township has the rate at $35.50 currently. So just wanted to present right. those numbers. So we are really not capturing um, an appropriate fee to be able to manage the system and improve, um, you know, such as like with an equalization basin, for instance. Yeah, and this is just the fee for the value of the structure, the infrastructure that's there now. Just mm -hmm. the sewers there now and the treatment plant there now. Mm -hmm. So you could charge more and defend it, and mm -hmm. uh, I think you'd be in good shape. Because mm -hmm. we have, um, I don't know how many uh, REUs are currently being served by our um, system. Maybe um, Mr. Hardesty would know, I forget. Uh, but we could theoretically double our REUs uh, in dry weather, but we can't really do it. Uh, because of wet weather, and so we have a what 200, we think. Uh, we I threw serve. out in a, in a past uh, analysis about 100 hmm. that I, I felt I comfortable right. until, yeah. and really can't really measure much more than 100. That's where I came up with that number. Mm -hmm. You're right. I, yeah. I remember a few things, not not much, <laughs> okay. but a few. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Why would we raise it? Just because she says to raise it, why would we raise it if we're doing okay? I I see no reason to raise the that's, price. That, that's your decision. I I will point out that this is the same rate that Green Oak Township connections pay. So, whatever break you're giving Northfield Township property owners, you're also giving Green Oak Township. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miss Check. You had a question? No, he just yeah, no, I, oh, had, okay. I had a, just Misato. a quick comment, if I remember correctly, that we are probably the lowest in Washtenaw County. So Boy, I, I, don't, I don't have those records in yeah. front of me. I would say you're on the low end. Absolutely. Or on the low end. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if we were the lowest, but I thought we were on the low end. I can, I can state that I, that is my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're, if we're doing okay, what makes the difference if we're on the low end? I have a Ms. Question. Ms. Elnock, okay. go ahead. So how many REUs are we committed to serve? It's in the reports. Yeah. I, I have it right so it's, here it's, if you want it's it. It's, two it's, point, it's about 2,900, right? It's 2,738. Okay. REUs is committed. That's in my notes. Yeah. 2,738. Yeah. So if I understand right, we have capacity for 100, thereabouts. I thought it was around 150, but 100. Are you used, but we're committed that someone could show up at our doorstep and say, hey, I've been paying for my sewer, and we have to service 2,900. That's correct. Uh, in fact, the agreement that uh, committed you uh, clearly states that Northfield Township will expand the plant when mm -hmm. uh, those people knock on your door and, and demand service. That expansion included a storage tank, yes. Should I proceed? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, have well, a, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, it Mr. says your Green Oak connection. Uh, uh, we already have agreed with Green Oak yeah, you're, to go to okay. 225. Uh, you're about five slides ahead of me. Okay. Well, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I'll wait till we get there. 
Uh, I have a question <coughs> though, is how much would it cost us to expand the plant? Because, I, I mean, I'm probably gonna get a slide ahead of you too, so maybe I'll wait till you get there. No. I'll wait till you get there. That, I, I don't have that in my presentation. That I know, but I'll wait till you get to uh, the improvements, okay. or the, um, the basin, I'll wait till you get to the basin that says it's gonna be about three million. Okay. I'll wait and hold on to that question. All right, so I'm gonna talk about four distinct parts of your system tonight, um, or considerations. I'm gonna talk about the North Territorial area, and then I'm gonna talk about uh, portions of the gravity interceptor near the lake, uh, parallel to the railroad. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about wet weather capacity at the plant again, I'll come back to that. And just we'll review the green oak commitments and their impact. So that's where I'm going to head over the next few minutes. Okay, the North Territorial Pump Station is, uh, that pump station is, is part of a special assessment district. Um, it was set up in 1998. It is uh, east of 23 and, and includes land on both the north and south side of North Territorial. And uh, your books have maps on that. Uh, uh, what page are you on, sir? There's no I'm, page numbers here. Well, I... I don't want to get ahead of you again. I didn't print it out, so I don't have the same version that you have. I'm probably I'm on the I'm on the slide that says sewer capacity considerations okay. North Territory. Oh, yeah, it's a little All hard right. to, a little hard to follow with no numbers. I didn't print it, sir. Can't help you. Well, whoever printed it. So the North Territory pump station again is surrounding North Territorial Road east of 23. Over here. That SAD was set up with a pump station and a force main that pumps it almost to the treatment plant, uh, about three miles if I remember right. And uh, those improvements were uh, several million dollars to construct in 1998. It was, it was set up to expand when additional development occurred, primarily west of 23. Uh, the Leland Farm and, and areas south of that. It, the, the plan was to expand that pump station and build a second force main parallel to it. All you know, right down to uh, Eight Mile Road, essentially. So we have, uh, we have actually had property owners or people with development interest west of 23 approach the township and ask about connecting to this system. It was always conceived that that would happen, so their, their requests are, are consistent with the sewer sizing and, and so forth, but the, the questions on the table here are, you know, should we allow that to happen? Is, do we tell them yes or no? And as, as far as uh, sewer-wise, this existing SAD has not developed very much. There are very few developed parcels over there. The demand on the sewer system is quite low, but these parcels did pay for that. And if we allow uh, many connections over there right now, they will use that capacity, and so, we might want to consider banking some money, having these folks pay some money that we bank so that when the people that originally paid for this improvement demand to connect, that we are able then to construct these improvements. I, Mr. Mann and I talked about that earlier when he was here and uh, he was, uh, we had talked about that many times actually. and He, mm -hmm. he concurred that that would be uh, something that you he would recommend you think about doing, uh, setting up a, should you allow that, those people to develop, setting up a, a method for them to uh, pay a, a special connection fee to uh, pay for this part of the SAD that they would be using, mm -hmm. that you would bank somehow. So where we would have, uh, you know, say we chose uh, $5,900 or something for a connection fee for anybody else who's already in the system or in one of the SADs, the fact that they're not in an SAD, you know, we could theoretically um, ask for another $500 potentially. So it's like $6,400, which would help with the improvements at the point when the rest of the North Territorial um, SAD wanted to come in. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly okay. right. Ms. Zelnock, how, how do we determine, is it 500, is it 5,000? Because it seems like 
just looking at the numbers is we have 2,700 SREUs already committed, but I don't think we have money in the bank to service those 2,700. Right. So yeah. what is the appropriate money if we start letting people use other people's areas to make sure that when that area wants it, we have the money in the bank to deliver the product? Mm -hmm. That would have to be calculated. The, the cost of the future improvements would have to be calculated in today's dollars. We'd have to figure out how many parcels we would potentially serve, and that would have to be calculated by, I think, both uh, uh, perhaps Mr. Mann would be involved with that, as well as perhaps my firm in uh, mm -hmm. recommending that number to you. So would that calculation also include any inflation because of... I mean, you're using current dollars, yeah. current calculations for today. We, we'd have to, we'd have to throw something like that in there. Okay. okay. That's a great. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So I think the big question is, when we have these different areas of the township, do we want to allow more development or not? Right now, we can't really allow anything. So if we want to allow the Leland Leland area to uh, to develop, it, we had need to figure out how much. You know, is it 200 houses? Is it 400 right. houses? Is what is it? And then, um, and so that's a policy decision. You know, if we want to allow that to happen, and then to come up with some sort of a means to not burden our current users. You know, yes, maybe they're paying a little too little for their quarterly just because we have needs there in the transmission lines to be checking. Uh, for infiltration and for repairs and things that should be built into our quarterly fees and it they potentially that is potentially not but um, it's a decision that we need to make as a board do we want development in certain areas of the township or not and then how do we develop a policy that will um, not burden our current users but take but make sure that we capture enough funds to do the improvements needed so anyway, that's, that's my two cents, but any more questions before Mr. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, who? I have one last question. Okay, Mr. Dockett, you raised your hand. Do you want to go? No, you can go. Um, I would like to state that I would be against the tank. If I'm, I, I'm jumping ahead again, but I'm looking at the Green Oak. Connections. We've already agreed to go to 2.25 from from one point, whatever six or whatever it is. Uh, why would we spend three million dollars to build a tank when we've already committed to Green Oak that we'll go from two uh, to 2.25? Why wouldn't we just build on to the plant, the capacity of the plant now, rather than Get get pay three million dollars or whatever it is for the tank, and then have to enlarge uh, that. That doesn't give us one gallon of more capacity that I can see. Again, you're about 15 minutes ahead of me. I, I'm not anywhere close to that on my slides. Okay. Um, if you want me to answer that now, I will. No. If you want to wait, no. go ahead. Wait. Um, Ms. Otto, do you have something yeah, that's I appropriate? I just wanted to know if we would have you do the. The, the study for the calculations and everything, uh, how much would that study uh, cost? Approximate. I, I would think it would be five to $10,000. Okay. I, I have to put some time into it to come up with a better number, but I, I suspect it's in that range. Okay. Hmm. And then there's flow monitoring. That's for yeah, that's, down that's to the next, uh, to. that's yeah. the next subject. Okay. So why don't I go there? So we're um, just picking one study. That, that's just for the one study, the calculations. Yeah. Study. Okay. So we talked about that's about that's about North Territorial. That's that has to do with an SAD and borrowing capacity that other properties paid for. There's also some concern through the central part of the sewer system uh, near the lake, parallel to the railroad you have a gravity interceptor that carries most of the wastewater to the plant. That's, uh, I'll just walk up here. So that's this area right 
right through here, right around 8 Mile, cross 23, parallel to the railroad. Right through here. It's the main interceptor. It takes pretty much all the wastewater except for the North Territorial area, which pumps pat around that. They certainly knew uh, at the time they did North Territorial there would be a capacity issue there. So uh, I do not have any measurements of flow there. I do have some measurements at the plant that I can make pretty good projections of what the flow is at that point. And, uh, what those calculations are showing is that uh, the, the, f the peak flow that you have during rainfall is about equal to the capacity of the sewer. So there isn't a cushion there, there isn't an extra amount waiting for new development to occur. So um, I have concerns about making many, many more connections to your gravity sewer system and what will happen uh, through that stretch of pipe. Um, again, this, there, there's some uncertainty in the calculations I've done, but I, I think I'm pretty close. So if you were, you know, the logical, the typical approach to improving sewer capacity is, is just to make the sewer larger. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would estimate, you know, there, I've estimated in the book cost to do that so that we at mm -hmm. least have something to plan on. But and also another next step could be before you invest money like that is to measure the flow. That's a pretty standard approach to uh, looking at capacity concerns. There are instruments that you can install in the sewer system and they would confirm these paper calculations that I've made. Those, that type of an analysis is typically done in the springtime. I'm actually installing about 40 of these right now throughout southeast Michigan in the next couple of weeks uh, due to the, the spring weather that's upon us. So uh, many communities do that to confirm uh, capacity. And I, I would suggest that that would be a, a good thing for Northfield Township to do, if not this year, next year. And what would be the uh, cost? I, again, I have to put some time into it. it mm -hmm. All these things take a, a lot of time for me to even put a, a cost to it, but it would be tens of thousands of dollars. It's probably, I'm going to say $50,000 plus or minus some. Okay. Now, if we did get the flow monitoring done, is that something that's required uh, for the state if we should get some funding opportunities? Y yes, um, yes. Um, it, if you do any improvement, in your sewer system that has to do with capacity, mm -hmm. uh, expanding the plant, building a tank, building new sewers, and you wish to use the state's revolving fund loan money to do that, which is a low interest loan program that the state of Michigan makes available to sewer system owners. You need to go through a very rigorous process to prove to them that you are using their money in the wisest manner. Um, that takes about two years to go through. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use their money, uh, it, there's quite a few steps you need to go through, including flow monitoring the first year, and then the second year you would be actually doing many investigations out in the system. Um, some communities choose to skip that and finance the work mm -hmm. privately, um, just to avoid all of those steps. And interest rates, at least, today are, are low enough that uh, it's not a huge difference to, in interest rates to do that. But mm -hmm. I, yes, you need to keep that in mind. If you want the very lowest interest rate from the state, they're going to have many, many steps through many, many years to go through. <coughs> and I think as soon as we have an improvement identified in, it, in the works. Let's say, we, let's say we confirm that there is an improvement needed there. The, the slide suggests that that is something you could put into a connection fee. You've identified it, you've maybe you've started to work on it. Uh, it's generally defendable to include those costs if the project is in, in the works. You can't just throw an extra five or ten million dollars in, in a fund to collect connection fees that aren't real. You, you need to tie it to a, a pending project. But 
that's conceivably a way to help pay for the project too. If, if you identify it, new connections would help pay for it. <coughs> Any questions on that? Okay. So wet weather capacity, wastewater treatment plant wet weather. Um, during very large storms, the, the plant staff do have to bypass some processes. We talked about that earlier. Uh, that is a violation of your permit. Um, at some point, some communities do, um, do have an enforcement action taken against them because of that. That's not the case in Northfield, but that could be could be out there at some point. Uh, <clears throat> new connections will only make that worse. As, as you add new connections, uh, the peak flow gets higher, and it, it makes it more difficult to push that water through the, the processes that are needed. Generally, wet weather, this, this, I'm going to try to address the questions I had earlier. Generally, wet weather problems are cost effectively controlled by building storage. So you store the water during the wet weather, and then when the rain stops, you bleed it back into the treatment plant. Dry weather expansion, new growth, new development, is has to be handled by expanding the plant. It's very difficult to expand the plant to handle a wet weather problem because you, you are using biology to treat that wastewater. That biology needs a constant stream of wastewater to keep it alive. So you can't just double the plant and have the flow and keep all these microorganisms alive that treat, treat the wastewater. Biological processes do not respond quickly to, to wet weather. A plant expansion would be, I don't know, it was estimated 15 years ago at about $12 million. That was 15 years ago. We all know inflation, that, where that number probably is, but it's much, much higher than $12 million. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Would there be a point, or what would you perceive, would there, could you perceive uh, a point when we may need to expand the plant? You're saying this is like really not something we need to even consider at this point. Is there like a double, triple, quadruple of the population or, or connections or whatever? Yeah, are there, I, I, some, one of the reports I looked at, it was, uh, 15, 1800 REUs, I thought, until you needed to expand the plant. So it's, it's quite a ways in the distance if you can capture this wet weather uh, through some means, through a storage tank. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead, Ms. Selma. So you're saying the, wet we or the storage tank is for the wet weather. That's correct. But yet it will let us to add capacity. It will because we're putting, we have somewhere for the water to go during the wet weather. Right now, we don't have anywhere for it to go. Mm -hmm. We can't push it through your plant, so we put it in the storage. Most wastewater treatment plants, I'm not going to say all because all don't, most wastewater treatment plants have storage. Yours does not. Mr. Dockett. You did, you did recommend this about 15 years ago, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Storage has been talked about in Northfield Township. Well, yes or no? Since 1988. Well, so it, and we didn't and we didn't spend the three million then, and we haven't used it. We haven't needed it, so I'm skeptical of you. Okay. Any other questions at this point? No. Go ahead, Mr. Rubel. That's all I had to say. Oh, so wet weather. If again, if you commit to doing a tank. It relate, similar to what I just talked about, the gravity sewer, you could start to put those, the cost of that tank into a connection fee. So mm -hmm. it's really needed for, to, for new connections, so that would be a mechanism to help pay for the tank. I just have one question. Go ahead, Ms. Otto. Um, does the, I know the rain uh, during the peak seasons really um, impacts us with the capacity. The flooding of the lakes and everything, does that also add to it? It did for a while. Um, I, you folk, Tim, Dan, Dan and Tim can, is it still does? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So is there, because I'm thinking that just having a basin may not be just the only solution that we may have to look at our lakes to see 
the runoff from the lakes. I know Horseshoe Lake has, uh, what, three, um, Chuck, you're gonna have to help me, five areas that run into it and one area that runs out of it. So it always floods. It, the more, the more stormwater you can get out of it, the better it will be. Okay. Um, it's been a long time since we did a, any sort of a study of that. Those are very expensive and take quite a bit of time too. Mm -hmm. But as you, as you find things, definitely you need to take them out. Yes. Well, it kind of sounds like if we could get a basin, then we could have more hookups, but then we're going to end up needing a bigger basin because we're going to end up having more waste. I mean, right? The hookups are waste. I mean, it sounds like it's a never-ending thing. If we want to, okay, we get a basin, and then we, oh, wow, we can have all these hookups. Now we're going to add a couple hundred or a couple thousand or whatever. And then we're going to be in a situation again where we're, where we're at capacity again soon. And then what do we do? This is a continuing... Well, yeah, I, a bigger I, basin, a second basin, a bigger if, plant? Well, at some point, if I, if I, I'd have to look at the report, uh, 15 or 1,800 uh, REUs, you're going to need to expand the plant. But that's almost double where you are right now, I believe. I mean, that's, that's a long way off. It could be, what, 10, 15 years, depending on the at, rate? At of, your current rate yeah. of growth, which has been almost nothing for 10 years, right. it's, okay. that's a long way off. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the future will be? I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay. Right. We may so. never get to that point. Yeah, yeah. so the bottom yeah. line is is that, number one, we're not going to be a canton where we just open up every, every farmland for development to we have to be very careful of what we do open up for development. Mm -hmm. So now my concern is the cheapest capacity, it sounds like, that we have out there is the basin mm -hmm. and it'll give us about 1500 IEUs that's my opinion and yet we have 29 2700 and something committed in REUs so how do I balance to make sure that when I get to that 1501 and that person that's been paying that I have capacity and what is the capacity at that point going to cost is it going to be the 12 million the 20 million so I have people using the cheap capacity, and how do I save for the expensive capacity when I get that one over or that second one or that five over that now I have to service them? That is kind of my concern is. Well, that's, that's a decision that every sewer system owner faces. Right. Every single one of them has that same. You know, how do I collect enough money from the new people to ensure that the people that have been paying when they go to use it, they have, have it at the more expensive rate, basically. Every sewer system owner has that same criteria. I mean, you just mm -hmm. keep an eye on it, you update your fees, that's, that's what you do. Right. And I, am I updating my fees for my current residents or am I updating my fees for my future? You pass on as much as you can to the future, generally. Mm -hmm. There's another, there's another choice. Many, many communities publish a service area. They define it. This mm -hmm. will be our ultimate service area. There is no deviation from that. Mm -hmm. And then you know exactly what it will be. Mr. Dackett. When is our agreement with Green Oak happen? I'm sorry, where? Well, it says here Green Oak Connections agrees that Northfield Township uh, we'll expand the, uh, w the treatment plant to 2.25. What, what, what would cause this to happen? Some development in Green Oak, I suppose. What will it cost us to? No, what I'm saying is <laughs> we have an agreement already. You do. Right. To, to, to change the plant from 1.3 to 2.25. That's correct. So, right. uh, we, we need to move through this a little quicker. We're not going to get very now far. Now, listen, you don't say anything to anybody else. Oh, I'm sorry. But when I ask a question, you got to stick your nose in. No, I'm now, sorry. I'm getting sick and tired of it, Mr. and Rocket, I'm not going to put up with it. You took a when I ask the question, I want an answer. I'm sorry, Mr. Doctor. Well, you you're sorry. You're pitiful. You, I don't want you 
interrupting I'm me. sorry, you took a breath and I thought you were done, and I apologize. I accept your apology. So that's what I'm asking. When can this happen? It could happen any time they decide. Absolutely. We, we have nothing, we have no way of controlling Green Oak. Is that correct? I, I don't see any timing in the agreement. It just says as. We, we don't, no, they, no they could do whatever they want though. We've already committed. You've, ar you've already signed the contract. Okay, today. that's what I want to know. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm just seeing many more pages and we have a lot to get through, so. I'm I just want to point out that that same connection fee you charge Northfield residents, you charge Green Oak residents. So um, just be careful what, what it is. That, mm -hmm. That's your only chance to charge them for their growth. So. so the last couple pages, I think, are just a summary of things we've talked about earlier as far as... Uh, North Territorial, I think we want direction on mm -hmm. whether we're going to allow additional parcels to connect to uh, the existing infrastructure that's there on the east side. A little bit on the west side, too. There's some sewers on the west side. And then we need to figure out how to charge. If we allow that to happen, how are we going to bank money so that the future improvements mm -hmm. we have a way to pay for? I think that's probably a connection fee. Um, that's what every, all signs are pointing to, but that has not been calculated yet. So I think hand-in-hand mm -hmm. hand with the decision to allow that, if that's what that's made, is let's figure out what that fee will be. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the gravity sewer areas, again, we're, we think we're pretty close to capacity there. So do we allow any connections anywhere else is, is a policy question. Um, how do we charge for... How do we pay for that improvement that's going to be needed? Mm -hmm. Connection fee, another way. Um, and uh, I think it will be needed sooner rather than later. I, I think you're pretty close. Uh, mm -hmm. I suppose the other decision is do we want to collect flow monitoring data to confirm this ahead of time? And mm -hmm. if we're going to do that in 2017, that time is now. If we're going to do it in 2018, we've got 12 months to get ready. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I want to mention that the gravity sewer near Whitmore Lake, this affects uh, what we do in the, in the North Village area also. If we're intending to do uh, or intending to allow any um, retail or housing in that mixed-use area, we're, we're going to need to do something there uh, to be able to have that happen. So um, that's a decision that needs to be made too by this, uh, this board. Not only does it affect the seven-mile SAD, but it will affect what we do at the North Village um, also. Can, can I ask what's the difference between what, el what else is there besides gravity feed? Force main or what? I don't understand it. What's the, the alternative? Yeah, look, well, we're talking about gravity feed. Yeah. Well, uh, well how many different sewer? I mean, there's a gravity feed yeah. and there's a forest main. That's, that's How many more are there? That I, I'm not, I think I'm the alternative is do we need a larger gravity sewer than what we have? I believe that's the option. Okay. I, but, but there are only those two, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's what I want to know. Thank you. And, and the very last slide, again, this is a summary uh, as far as waste, wastewater and treatment concerns in both. Northfield and, and Green Oak, um, we're, we're, we're very stressed at wet weather. Do we continue to allow connections in, in either place? Um, if we say no, I'm not sure how you honor your, your contract. You've got a contract out there that says you will. Mm -hmm. um, I believe if you're going to continue to do that, you need to move forward with a tank. And then the question goes back to how to pay for the tank, and, and once you start it, I think you can put some or all that cost in the connection fees. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Selnick. So if we move forward, forward with the tank, I mean, we have to figure out who's, I'm not saying we are, um, how much would that cost us, and you know, from your perspective, meaning how much would your firm make? 
I have no idea. It's I, three three million dollars is what I think you need to pay yep. for a tank. Is that like total cost? Uh, total cost, including yours as well in there. I, I believe all engineering, okay. all contingencies would fall in that number. So, so again, you know, I'll go back and say my concern is that the tank will be the cheapest capacity that yes. we will be able to deliver in this township. Yes. And we still have 2,700 REUs that we couldn't even accommodate with the tank. And it's a matter of, yes, when do they show up? And, you know, how do we save and ensure that we have the money? Because if we you know, let you know, people use it and then all of a sudden we don't have it, and then we ma better make sure that the next person that comes that's been paying that we can support it. You're, you're going to, yeah, if everything comes, you're going to need to expand that plant at some point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we should plan for it. Mr. Dockett, go ahead. We have to say one thing that, we have to remember one thing that this man is a salesman. He gets paid you know, if he builds a tank. So I, I would like to see us uh, maybe get another second opinion. Ms. Bellager. I mean, would it, could we get just a, maybe a little bit of feedback just um, from a couple of the gentlemen here that actually work in the plant and deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis? I just kind of think that it would be good for Great idea. perhaps the board and for those in attendance to maybe hear some just some real life feedback and, and opinions on the two gentlemen next to me. I'd just like to say that Mr. Rubel, the discussions didn't initiate for Mr. Rubel. Many years ago, Howard Fink and I did it. Um, Ms. Supervisor, Madam Supervisor Shockley, and I initiated these because of concerns at the plant. So um, take that for what you will. But um, the equalization tank may last you for 10 years, it may be 15 years, it may only be five before any expansion is needed. Like Mr. Rubel said, we don't know when development's gonna come, but this will be the most cost-effective way to allow new customers. Those new customers, if the fees are adjusted, will help pay for the future expansion of the plant that may be needed someday. Um, the state of Michigan says that we have to be able to handle, is it a four inch, 3.99 inch rainfall? we've never had that yet we've had a three inch rainfall at one time and i'll tell you what you wouldn't want to have been up there with us when we were working through that it it was uh, it was a nightmare for quite a while and so the tank is needed in wet weather flow in my opinion thank you yeah well my concern is that um it, if we're interested in seeing any homes built in the leland area at any reasonable price that will be of great assistance to the Whitmore Lake School District. We're gonna need to get off our hands and, and make a decision here and, um, and plan for the future. And the boards have pushed this off and pushed this off. And it's time that we have some gall and do what we need to do. So um, I think we need to have a policy committee or work out a policy here, and bring to the board on how we're gonna deal with this. It, it, and we can decide what we want to do. I mean, do we want the Leland area to develop or not? We could say yes or no, and then plan what costs are going to happen for that or need to happen for that. We could look at our community park or North Village area and the seven mile SAD. If we want anything to happen there, there's certain costs associated with that. So um, it goes on and on, but I have had inquiries from uh, a couple developers who would like to build some homes in the area. Uh, I'm meeting with one on Friday who's interested in a senior housing um, complex. So you can't do that without providing some sewer service to have it at, at any reasonable rate for people to be able to afford. So. We need to make these decisions. Do we want anything to happen? And if we don't want anything to happen here, we don't want any development, we still have a problem. We still have a problem. So we have to make some decisions here. And I, I frankly would like to see a nice, um, reasonable sized um, housing 
on the Leland property. I think that would really help the school district significantly. And um, so, uh, you know, I'm for looking at the numbers and seeing how we can do it, that it's not gonna impact current users and, um, and the fees will be borne by the developer. So, I mean, that involves our connection fees. I think we can come up with a policy if we put our heads together to do this. Doesn't mean we have to accept everything that comes across the table, you know, in the future with, with developers, but if we don't have any plan for it, you know, it, it's going to be difficult. So um, I'm just going to recommend that we just put it on for the next agenda for our workshop meeting to have it to start looking at it a little bit more. Okay, that's only two weeks away. Yeah, I'm not saying, well, because one of the things that he suggested is that we do some the of the flow studies, monitoring. the flow monitoring. I would like to have so some numbers for that. So let's take some steps. Mm -hmm. Well, can we have some numbers for flow monitoring at our next, um, in two weeks, or is that too quick? Okay, just, we just need some numbers. I, 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 I can do that. Okay. In what areas are we going to do the flow monitoring? Is it, you know... We're going to need the seven-mile yeah. area, correct? Uh, we won't really need flow monitoring on the, um, from the Leland property, will we? No, I don't believe so. No. Okay. That one's large enough. The gravity interceptor? Is yes. Is that the one we need? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Two to four Is there, there are a few other areas? No? I don't know, Brian. I'll leave that I mean, up to you. It, you. It's not just the seven-mile. I thought right. there was an, a couple other areas. Eight yeah, there's yeah. going to be probably a the few between connections. seven and eight mile somewhere yeah. Yeah. in that range. Yeah. Okay, that would help. That would help a lot. Okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Manley. Aren't you suggesting, or unless I understood you, like coming up with a committee to study this and to run some numbers and um, well, we can use put some thought into it. Mr. Rubel would be helpful if any of the board here would like to kind of get in on thinking about that. That is certainly. Would, be, would that be useful for you? Brian? I would prefer not to do a committee. Okay. Just bring just it to the board because yeah. just let them do okay. it and then we'll just review it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I feel better giving you technical advice. I, I, I'm a little nervous about writing policy documents, but okay. yeah. Right. I, well, that's us. Ans answering that's technical us. questions yeah. I'll do uh, all night long, but. Uh, yeah. Well, we could come up with a couple scenarios, I'm sure. Mr. Dackett. I would like to ask the uh, sewer people. I, I believe there's only one permit on Seven Mile Road. Is that correct? Seven Mile. Why? Why would we monitor that? There's only one. I mean, there's only one sewer on the whole thing, three. on the whole line. Three. Oh, three. Well, mm -hmm. there's only three on the whole line. Mm -hmm. Why would we monitor that? It, the, the biggest problem is going to be that the lift station at 8 Mile and uh, the lines that are potentially full. So Mr. Rubel has enough uh, expertise. He'll be able to pick the right spots to monitor. I work with Mr. Hardesty and Mr. Willis. We'll, I'm sure. We'll come up with a plan. Okay. Well, I heard you say they were going to do 7 Mile. Well, it's to be able to have 7 Mile feed into it. So. You need to get Mr. Okay. Willis. Okay. Um, did you have a no oh. I just we need to get mr. Willis a nameplate yeah yes okay <laughs> okay all right um, so we'll be talking um, our next meeting though our next works workshop is really the DPG and Planning Commission so we're not going to really have time for this again but I think we made some progress uh, tonight and uh, you know I believe that um, well we didn't take a vote I guess we need to determine whether we all want to see some more development in the township along the US 23 corridor in accordance with the master plan. I and don't know that we would take a vote unless, yeah, okay. on that. No. Yeah. But, we're f but, but that's the feel, right? <laughs> yeah. We're not, this is not to extend into the ag areas where we're never intended. Okay, this is for the master planned areas. Okay, great. Thank well, you. most certainly we have, like was mentioned earlier, we have already um, um, allocated, what do you call them, RUEs, or RU, whatever they are, to hook up. We already have a couple thousand that are allocated. We need to certainly, if anything else, certainly address that. 
you know, as opposed to before we even be begin thinking about moving forward with uh, any kind of development ideas. That's all. Okay. So we do need to like look at this, like you're saying. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move on here, so we can uh, actually end before 10 and everybody turns into a Madam pumpkin. Chair, is it possible that we could possibly have just a five minute recess? Yeah. Five minute bathroom? recess, go ahead. <laughs> Thank okay, you. yes, let's take a recess. Thank you. Good suggestion. We are, so no more questions. No more questions, though. That's one of the. Yeah. No more questions. <laughs> Not sure we can, you know, have this and this, you know. That's just too much. Department reports and that. 
too much on the agenda. Still vetting. We thought we would, but we want to vet some more. Oh gosh! All right. Well, do we have everybody? I should go back. Not quite. Mm. 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 Well, that's too bad. We did not lose the Don't yeah. Don't get uh, don't get norovirus. My daughter is out. Okay, my daughter's. Out. She's got a five-year-old, eight-year-old, 12-year-old. They all have vomiting and diarrhea, no power. They're pulling water out of their pool to push the toilets, and they have no heat. Just oh, yeah. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, good. All right, let's get, let's get back to order here. All right, now, Mr. Kaz Dennis Kazan, thank you for your patience. <laughs> Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> He's going to have to talk under the mic. Yep, use the mic, please. Turn on. Okay. Sorry, Wayne. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, you made a good choice in concrete. Um, having been a contractor, I guess I'm a little biased. Asphalt is, by nature, not a good thing to have around. Uh, my my uh, my time here is very simple. I'm, I'm I just don't know how to go about it since it's brand new. The property across <coughs> uh, from the viewing area that is now owned by the the city here, uh, we don't know what process we need to do to ask to use it as a parking and viewing area, okay. and we'd like to know what what is the process we have to go through. Okay. We've got uh, Chief Wagner here who takes all of these uh, applications and we'll, he'll be able to speak to it. Sure. Um, so what we'll have you do is get a civic event permit, which you already do for the fireworks. It's just a, 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 an addition to it. Okay. Um, we'll need the insurance like we normally do. And then we'll sit down and plan that portion of it also. Um, the, the, the fireworks committee for years and years and years has used that property for parking and um, <clears throat> and for viewing prior to myself being here. Um, when I came in, I was kind of the bad guy, and when a contract was brought to me by the Van Curlers and the fireworks committee to sign, I asked uh, our attorneys to review it, and they recommended that we not sign that contract um, at the time, and I can't remember the exact reason. It had to do with liability and and us taking a liability for property that we didn't own. I think I don't know if that sounds right, Brad. I don't. You weren't there at the time, but anyhow, uh, it, that shouldn't be an issue anymore now that the township owns the property. Um, and the fireworks committee themselves will park. They will take the the job of parking the people for the fireworks um, the day of. And we will work with them to make sure that we have an emergency egress for the emergency vehicles from the command post, which is actually the post office. That's where we park all of our vehicles. And then we make sure that there's an egress out the back to Barker Road. 
in case there is a larger emergency outside of the fireworks themselves. Um, I've worked with Mr. Kazan many years now. Uh, we work very well together for the on the lake fireworks and for the viewing area that um, <clears throat> the post office owned that we've always uh, used for the viewing area and had no problems. We work very well together, so I don't anticipate any problems. It will actually probably help the overall traffic if we are allowed to park on the township property there um, because we can manage it a little bit better compared to having a bunch of different little areas that uh, people are parking, <clears throat> whether it's the Best Western or Captain Joe's or the 75 Barker and so, but having a large area like the township owns now to park will make it much easier for us to manage the traffic and the, and the parking and safer for everybody. Okay. Good. That's what we're hoping. We'd also like to uh, ask permission once again to hang a banner across uh, Main Street. However, last year we had some storm issues and it flipped over and we had some issues with that uh, this year. Uh, due to the wind event we just went through, and I guess it's becoming more and more uh, pronounced, uh, we're going to use a double cable system to keep it in place so we don't have to worry about it getting messed up. Okay. Is there a permit required for that? No, ju usually just the board gives them permission. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of different places on Main Street that sometimes people hang banners um, right there at the post office, and then I want to say up by East Shore there's some place too that from time to time somebody will ask for permission to hang a banner yeah okay. we just use the, the one location right out in front of the post office yeah. Yeah. okay well do we need that motion tonight to allow you to hang a banner i was planning oh. on coming in tomorrow and, and uh, submitting all my paperwork but now i see that i'm going to have to have okay. a trailer um to to go along with the parking if that's approved yes okay well it will come back to the board then with all your paperwork right okay that's, uh, that's what i was going to say everything comes in as a package yeah. and we view it all at the same time yeah. so okay Great. Yeah. they usually so give us a date they usually give us a date that they're going to put it up and We're, we it are down. shooting on uh july the first well, i mean you're going to have to put it on the uh, okay. yes okay. Yeah. Okay. it'll be on there okay okay, <laughs> okay. no mystery dates <laughs> all right Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for your patience and sticking this out. Okay. Um, Good luck. I hope you make a lot of money. Mm. All right. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Fiber Technologies Network request to approve to modify Exhibit A of the Bilateral Metro Act permit to expand its network. And you all have the, um, the letter from Fiber Tech. They're just needing uh, to expand. Um, to um, serve a better, put a better cable into a cell tower that they have out there on um, Wilmer Lake Road, I believe. There's a map in your packet, and it has been reviewed by Jacob uh, Rushlow of OHM. Can I make a motion? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, approve Fire Technology Network's request to modify Exhibit A of the Bilateral Metro Act permit to expand its network. Okay. I'll support. Okay, we have a motion by Chick, support by Otto. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Thank you. Okay, next item, hiring of Auxiliary <laughs> Firefighter Fred Anstead. Would, would you like to speak to this? Uh, I don't really have anything to add other than what's okay. in the memo. Um, okay. Where Fred was actually with Northfield Township for quite a few years, probably 15 <laughs> years ago. Uh, he went on to become a full-time firefighter and now as a captain with Ypsilanti Township Fire Department. So he's not only experienced and has many years of experience in the fire service, but he has experience here in Northfield Township also. Okay. We, we didn't do anything with these. Uh, We're not there yet. Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion to hire. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to hire Fred Anstead as auxiliary firefighter. I support. Okay, motion by Chalkley, support by Bellager. Any more discussion? Uh, 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 contingent on a successful background check and physical. Okay, uh, we'll add that. 
contingent on a successful background check and physical. So we have a motion by Chalkley, support by Belliger, with the addition of, um, let's see, uh, re motion to hire Fred Anstead as auxiliary firefighter, contingent on a successful background check and physical. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, 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 hold on now. Is, is this, is this what we're on? Um, this one here. Well, is there a, a price? What is this? This is the dispatching. Okay. Different. That's the dispatching you're looking at. We're on this one here. Mr. Wagner, do you know what the salary is for this one? Right the uh, auxiliary firefighters make, I believe, fifteen or fif fifteen or fifteen. Fourteen fifty, or fifteen dollars an hour, I believe. Okay, but they all get the same. It's a set. set yeah, it's in the con it's in the contract. What, what okay. whatever the uh, the contract, it, they'll be working the duty program. So it's the duty program pay. Okay. We should probably table this one. I, they got my packets all screwed up. This will be a discussion on our docket. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. Yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> Do I don't know where mine is. Well, you can. Miss Zelnuck is oh, giving you hers favorite. if you would like to that take change? it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. But okay. I, I got some questions on the next one. That's one. Okay. There well, we're on this one now. So, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. The next item, um, I'll let Ms. Elnock speak to. Uh, the receipt and discussion of recommendation of controller candidate. So at this point in time, we'd like to table this item. We'd like to do a little more vetting on the candidates. As you know, that we have one that has withdrawn. So we'd like to um, check references and a few other items on the um, remaining two at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a motion to table by, by uh, Ms. Elnock. I'll support that. Any uh, d more discussion on that? Ms. Chip? We had interviews with both. And what, uh, what else are we looking for from them? Are you? Um, to answer a few, actually we might bring them in for second interviews. Um, both have good um, pluses and minuses and um, we just want to see if they can accommodate our request. In particular, one, it, we're concerned about the number of hours that would actually be in the office. Okay. And the number, if, you know, if that person would be doing the work or subcontracting it. So it's just a second interview? I think, I think, yes. And checking references, too. And checking references. We okay. time so we just think it might be good to um, do a little more vetting good. at this point. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Belliger. Are we still accepting uh, uh, resumes from other applicants? Is this ad still being advertised at this time? It is. It so is. if, if okay. we do get other ones um, and they look really good, we would certainly interview them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the question I have is um, if you're going to go ahead and uh, check references, have they filled out an application? <laughs> well, that is... That I'll is, it. we don't have application. I'll let the supervisor yet. answer that one. Okay. Yes, uh, we are working on that. Yeah, that's something that need that we as personnel committee need to spend some time okay. on. But um, I do have some draft ones that I've had um, Ms. Carlisle working on with me. And uh, so we, we will have an application. But in the past, they've only requested resumes and cover letters. And we want to change that, or at least I do. Okay. So we're working on that. Yeah, because normally when yeah. you get to the uh, point of when you're going to have uh, references and everything, we, you should have an actual application in place. Uh, yes. To safeguard against legal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, there's, there's some things we want to improve. So. All right. Yes. But anyway, um, so motion to table uh, by Zelnock, support by Chalkley. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you, that passes. Uh, you see a fee schedule revision um, also in the packet. 
And uh, basically when the township hired uh, Baqueta, these were their fees that they were buying into. And we haven't had them put into a, an official schedule that we have adopted. Um, but they have been using these fees uh, ever since McKenna came on. So uh, this is just basically um, putting it out there um, so we have an official schedule. We can also attach this to our budget so we know uh, what we're going to be bringing in with the different um, kind of applications that people uh, make to the township. So I guess I would move to adopt the fee schedule revision uh, as distributed um, to reflect McKenna Associates contracted rates. I will support. Okay. Motion by Chalkley, support by Chick. Any dis more discussion on this one? Oh, yeah, they, they got yes. about $8,000 in, in fees uh, in the okay. bills this way. I mean, the, these people are going crazy. We don't need all this. Okay, uh, Ms. Bellager. So is these, are these rates what they have been, what we have been charged in the previous year or two or three, or have these been adjusted and increased? I'm curious. Does anybody know? These fees have been enforced since um, McKenna came on. They are passed through, so they don't charge the township. They, you know, charge the applicant these fee these different fees. Okay. Okay. So we aren't paying, you know, the say for the new s development site plan. We're not paying the 650. Um, the applicant is paying that. Okay, you know, that, that's a good that's a good point. There's um, just a note that um, I was talking to Rick, and this kind of goes in with this. That's why I'm going to mention this now. He said we ought to be careful that we actually create a, um, a trust when we are dealing with allowing, like, um, McKenna to work in, you know, I guess there have been some cases where our, our, the township has actually put money forward, I guess, on some, some uh, work by... Um, McKenna and others, and not necessarily had that money up front from the developers beforehand. So he wanted us to safeguard against that. Right. And there's another issue too that he mentioned that I want to bring up uh, maybe later when that comes back up as well. Yeah, yeah I don't think that's happened since the since we've been on board. N not since this board yeah. has been on, right. but in the recent recently it has. And he wanted to make sure that we put things in escrow before we get mm -hmm. uh, the um, you know like McKenna and different planners to spend their time and money. Mm -hmm and that we already have that money in escrow before they do the work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Ms. Selma, can yeah. you have a question? So, I mean, I think it's important that a, uh, this schedule should be created right after the approval, and it is quite a bit higher, even though it is a pass-through from our last planner. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know if that was very, uh, you know, apparent when the contract was agreed to in January, 20, January um, 2016 or not, but it certainly does highlight an increase in all the fees. Right. Carlisle Wartman didn't cost as much as McKenna, and yeah. that's why the fees are higher. But Carlisle Wartman did not uh, submit um, in our, you know, when we were looking at for planners again, so we didn't have the opportunity to choose them again. Any more? Um, yes. Down here? Mr. Dockett. These planning services from McKenna for this month is eighteen thousand four hundred forty-six dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, this is pass through. No, <laughs> this we pay. Some of it is for the, I believe, the community uh, park. Well, I, it just—it's a crazy. The, these we need to tell these people that we'll tell them what we want. We don't want them to tell us eighteen thousand dollars this month. Come on. Okay. Criminal. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Do we have any more discussion first? Okay. We have a motion on the table by Chalkley support by, I think, Chick. Yes. Um, to adopt the fee schedule revision uh, to reflect McKenna Associates contracted rates. All in favor say aye. No, aye. I want a roll call vote, please. Okay, roll call vote, please. Chalkley? Yes. Dockett? No. Manley? Yes. Otto? Yes. Bellager? Um, yes. Check. Yes. Zelina. No. <coughs> okay. That passes. Um, so next item is the Emergent Health Partners Dispatch Contract Renewal. Right here. Okay. Would you like to speak with, to this, uh, Chief White? Uh, it's just a renewal of the 
contract that we do every couple mm -hmm. years. Okay. And it's actually less. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Dockett has a question. Okay. Uh, what price are we talking about? The ten thousand uh, eight hundred nine, or are we talking about twenty one thousand eight hundred uh, and thirty five? I I can't figure it out. It's on the page. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's the fourth page. There's no page number. Three? No numbers on the bottom of the fourth page. Page three. Section three. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I counted the. I counted the top sheet. Okay. It's on the bottom of the third page. Right. Okay. So it, the first year is ten thousand eight hundred and nine dollars, and the second year is eleven thousand and twenty five dollars. Are we? Are we? Are we going to okay both of these now? I just want yes, the, to this, the total. So the it, total is twenty one thousand. Is that for right? two years? Yeah. Well, I know, but I just yep. but but yes. you don't have the total here that I can see. Yes. Do you do where? No, you're you're correct. Oh, okay. If you add oh. those two, oh, okay. that would be the total for the two years. That's that's all I want to know. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Yep. So I think we should mention it in the in the uh, okay that is that is a total of twenty one thousand eight hundred thirty five. Okay, I move that we. Um, Approve the new fire department dispatch contract with Emergent Health Partners or Partners for a two-year contract for a total of twenty-one thousand eight hundred thirty-five dollars and sixty-three cents. I'll support. Okay, motion by Chalkley, support by Otto. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Okay, thank you. Next item: Metro Dispatch contract renewal. Okay, so this one, do you have anything you'd like to say, Mr. Wagner? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, you're waiting no, for go me. go ahead. Yeah. Um, so as it says in the uh, cover letter there, we haven't had an increase in police dispatch in since 2008 there. Uh, requesting a 3% increase um, to bring the annual contract amount to $65,247. Okay. Mr. Dockett. I'd like to have the lawyer look at the last page. Uh, it's on here and it says that there's one, two, three, four. There's four uh, signatures. They all say 4-2011. Uh, Northfield Township, Michelle Manning, no date. Is this legal? Is this a legal document? That, that was, that, what did we ever, would you, would you take a look at it, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it as oh, we speak. Oh, okay, well, I'm just curious about uh, why Michelle's name on here and no date. I, I couldn't tell you why it's not dated, but okay. if she was authorized by the board to sign it and she signed it, then it's legal. Okay, yeah. doesn't matter if it's dated or not. All right, I'd like to make a motion to amend the dispatch services contract between Washtenaw County and Northfield Township Police Department dated January 1st, 2011, um, as follows, to amend Article 2, the price to extend the contract as follows, beginning July 1st, 2017, upon the above dispatch services and submission of invoices. Uh, Northfield Township will pay the sheriff an amount not to exceed $65,247 per year. Price will be set until June 30th, 2021. Oh, that's what I wanted. Pardon? That's what I wanted. I couldn't find the term yeah. date. Yeah. So motion by Chalkley. I'll su support. Support by Otto. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Okay, thanks. That passes. Okay. Next item. Update from the personnel committee. Well, I'll let... Um, Ms. Manley and Ms. Otto chime in here, but uh, we did meet um, for one meeting, and we need obviously quite a few more, uh, but we did make some progress on um, looking at the township manager's job description, and Ms. Otto sent out a draft 
with two versions for us to look at. I'm sorry I have not had a t chance to respond yeah. to that. So what I provided is it, it's almost like it's like how we do a contract grid is that mm -hmm. you put the original language of what was in the job description and then you have a, a column that changes what the language is proposed. So you see what the original language was and then you have the proposed language and then comments over on the side. So all I asked is to have it reviewed. Um, it was set up in Excel format. So one tab is a summary page with two types of summaries in there. They to pick whichever one is more in line with what we want. Um, the second was the description of the job, and the third is the requirements. What are we looking for uh, for requirements of this person fulfilling? So, and then I highlighted the areas that our legal um, had identified that needed to have to be revised or worded better. So um, I highlighted those in yellow so everybody understands that those were areas that they had to revised and then I also looked at some of the language seemed to be redundant and decided to group things together and remove the redundancy. Okay. Thanks for working on that. Um, Ms. Manley, did you have any um, input from that? No, I guess it was a very good meeting. Like yeah. you said, we definitely have, you know, a lot of challenges mm -hmm. to face and then reading your supervisor memo, you know, there's a lot of review that needs to be done in the in the staffing issues so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, we'll get it done right right and I, I've passed out job descriptions to our what are we uh, talking about? we're talking about staffing there's no paper no paperwork on no, no. Okay. It, right. so we I passed out job descriptions and um, you know so we're getting feedback from our staff members letting us know what additional things they do that m might not even be on their job description. And uh, so we're looking at all of that and the employee manual. So it's gonna take a little time. Hopefully we'll have another meeting again soon. The township manager um, position was posted and um, we've gotten uh, a few uh, unqualified candidates um, responding, but uh, we'll see what else comes in in the days ahead. So. Um, Moving on, a letter of understanding to the POAM contract allowing the Director of Public Safety latitude in determining starting wages for newly hired part-time police officers. So this is another one uh, for Chief Wagner. So to, in, in one of the ways we're trying to address the overtime issue is by hiring additional part-time officers. One of the problems we've had with hiring part-time officers in the past is we've, we've hired younger, uh, less experienced officers that are really looking to become full-time. So we hire them, we bring them in, we give them experience. We can't offer them a full-time job, so we lose them to another department. So we're, what we're targeting now is more senior, experienced officers maybe that are recently retired and many of them retire at the age of 53, 54, 55, want to maintain their uh, MCOL certification, and so that they're willing to work some part-time hours. Um, the difficult thing is hiring them at $14.50 an hour um, because the con that's, and, and don't quote me on that, but it's around there, the, the starting wage for a part-time officer. So the union and myself have discussed at possibly allowing me to determine what their starting wage is based on their experience um, and, and possibly hiring them, bringing them in at $18 an hour, which is still saving us uh, wages instead of paying a full-time officer overtime. So. Mm -hmm. That, that's that's what we're looking for. It's it's stri it would be strictly up to me. I'll come up with a policy that will, you know, so that it's fair for all of the part-time officers. If you have 20 years of experience, you will start at at this step in the in the uh, contract. If you have 25 years, or if you have, or if we do happen to find somebody that is interested in part-time that is newer and they may start at the, the very first step that the, if they don't have any experience. Okay. 
All right, I guess I'll make a motion to approve the attached letter of understanding to the current POAM contract. Support. Okay, motion by Chalkley, support by Chick. Any more discussion on that, Mr. Dockett? Uh, yes, I'm wondering about Chief Wagner's ability to make this decision. Wagner placed Lieutenant Green on administrative leave four months ago and for an undetermined amount of time, causing a personnel shortage and a lot of overtime for the police department. Wagner and the township labor attorney has cost the taxpayers of Northfield Township thousands of dollars. Green has collected full-time salary, health insurance, vacation pay, holiday pay. Uh, I, I, I would like to talk to this, this labor attorney and find out after four months we've been paying this guy, now they want to hire somebody to take his place. I think he should be here working. So I'm voting no on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dockett. Um, any other discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 I'd like to have a roll call vote. Roll call please. vote. Shockley? Yes. Dockett? No. Manley? Yes. Otto? Yes. Bellager? Yes. Chick? Yes. Zelenak? Yes. Thank you. It passes. Okay. Next item, uh, temporary change of status for police officer Corey Johnston from part-time to full-time. And so this addresses directly what uh, Mr. Dockett just, just brought up. And basically this also assists with allowing a part-time officer. Part-time officers are restricted by the number of hours they can work. This will allow him to work, more, and he's willing to work more hours um, at the full-time status. Um, so it, it is helping with less overtime and uh, some employee burnout that we're starting to see with uh, some of the officers working so much overtime. Depending on, the, the, this gives us the ability, depending on the outcome of the employee on administrative leave, to bring this employee, the, the part-time to full-time employee, back to part-time without laying part-time officers off, which is a... Uh, one of the points in the contract that says if we lay anybody off, we have to lay part-timers off before any full-timers. So this gets us around that issue. Okay, okay I guess I'll make a motion. Uh, oh, Mr. Dockett, I'll let you ask your question first. I don't have a question. I just want to know, Bill, uh, what uh, is this kind of the get along with the union why why we I mean it's a problem the union is that I, I'm sorry Mr. Dock I couldn't understand hey, are we talking about this because you have to deal with the union in other words this guy is part-time and if he goes full-time then he's he's in the union then you can't get rid of him or he, he's in the union either way but if we promote him to full-time the only way to take him back to part-time is to lay him off and i can't lay according to a provision in the contract i can't lay the union the union contract. yes i can't lay any full-time officers off without laying oh. all the part-time officers off first i get it i get it yeah. okay um i move the approval of the letter of understanding to promote officer johnston to full-time um, okay. is this the wage Sixteen. Well, that was in the other one, wasn't it? That was it the other what's, one. what's the wage going to be? His, I, his wage will be whatever the first or second step of a full-time officer will be. Mm -hmm. we'll, what we have to do is look at all his, we'll have to calculate all his hours worked as a part-time officer and then make <coughs> compare that to the equivalency of a full-time to see what step he would come in at. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Okay. So motion by Chalkley, support by Chick. Uh, any more discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. And then we are on the last 
item here. Um, bills. bills. Okay. Time for bills. Yeah. Anybody have anything they want to bring up? Mr. Duckett. Uh, page five. Uh, of which? Benchmark Outdoor Service. Tree removal at Community Park, 500 bucks. Okay. Who is Benchmark Outdoor Services? It's Tim Seville. Well, now, doesn't isn't he in charge of this this uh, operation? Yeah. Uh, who we, did we bid this out, or we just gave this job to someone who is on the committee? Is that the Parks and Rec Committee uh, had arranged with Mr. Seville to take that tree down? And we did not interfere with the Parks and Rec Committee. Well, uh, we did give them ten thousand dollars, didn't we? We did. Well, if we give them ten thousand dollars, I think we should say, "Hey, wait a minute! If you want to spend money, you're going to have to go out and get bids. This is this is crazy to to give this kind of money. Uh, and look at the job. Why are we paying five hundred? The tree's still there. He, his equipment broke down. Well. <laughs> This is exactly he, what I'm talking about. This and is he's crazy. repairing it. Yeah. Uh, this, this, this should not be uh, mm -hmm. uh, people working for the township, doing the job for the township, and getting $500, and the job's not done. I, I'm, I'm upset about this. Okay. So. Uh, Thank you. I'm sure he'll be out there as soon as he gets his equipment fixed. Um, and if anybody but, has but looked he at shouldn't, that tree, but he shouldn't have got the job. We should bid the job out. How do we know we got a good deal? Okay. I mean, I I, I just don't get it. That was the Parks and Rec uh, board. That it did. doesn't make any difference. We give the ten, we give the money. Yeah. I any mean, other items? I'm, I'm the only one that cares about about this. Any other items, Mr. Dockett? It, did that come out of, uh, is that $500 coming out of their rec money? Parks and rec money, yes. They're 10000 that they got. And at the end of the year, it's all going to roll back in and to the general fund if there's anything left. So, um, Any more items, Mr. Dockett? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, i got to take a break. I'm, my head's aching right now. Okay. Does anyone else had have any more? I got some. Uh, I got some questions. Um, yes. I'm just kind of curious. Um, on that same page, a little bit down further, uh, near the bottom, it says Township yeah. Manager FICA. Oh, where? Which page are? The are same page. Um, that would be page five. Are you in open or? I'm in the check disbursement report for okay. Northfield Township. Check date two fourteen to three nine. Page uh, five, near the bottom, in the payroll section, it says Township Manager FICA. Now, if we're not having a manager, we're not paying a manager. I'm kind of curious. I just, I'm curious. I just was <coughs> highlighted that. I'd like to know what is this fee if we don't have a manager. Can That's I all. I mean, it might be a legitimate yeah. thing for it. I just was curious. Okay. We'll let um, Miss Otto address it. I'm, I can't um, find it. They probably have taken the FICA out, and this is the payment of it. So they probably, uh, there's certain periods of time when you can pay taxes, and you don't pay them all the time. But I'm just, esti I'm just estimating that that's what they did, is they, they paid it at a certain period of time after he left, or they found out they didn't pay enough. And so they're paying it. Okay, thank you. It'd be nice yeah. to nice to verify. But it that, would yeah. okay. be best to clarify why it was done that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Are we sure it's not related to the um, assistant to township manager? Might it be d dumped into the same line item? Yeah, I don't know, and yeah. that could be too. Yeah. I, I'm getting the feeling that it is. I would ask Christina tomorrow. Yeah. Or I can ask her for you. She'll know. Yep. Okay. Anything else? No? Okay. So I guess I would move that we adopt the uh, bills as you have in front of you. Oh. Motion by Chalkley. 
off the clerk. Are, are we going to vote on it? Yep, we are. I would like to have a roll call vote. Okay, motion by Chalkley, support by Otto. Roll call vote, please. Check. Yes. Docket. <coughs> no. Chalkley. Yes. Bellager. Yes. Manley, yes. Docket. No. I don't, I don't. No. Twice. <laughs> yes. I get the vote twice. Okay. There you go. And I go. said yes. I was okay. telling her he said yeah, no. <laughs> now we have second call to the public. Would anyone like to speak with us now? It's after 10 to bring it's it Everybody's good? Oh. Fighting over it. Okay. Hello. Adam only, 9315 Lakewood Court. I'd like to thank you for addressing the questions. I know that doesn't always happen and clarifying it because not many people in here are experts in t township government, including the board. So, Can um, you state your name again, please? Adam only, 9315 Lakewood Court. Um, I, I find it kind of rude of some of the board members to question experts when they're telling you we are bypassing processes. That means Mr. Hardesty up here at some point is probably dealing with fecal matter that he shouldn't be dealing with because of wet weather. So when you say you're skeptical of his report and what we need, you're not the one standing in it. You're not the one dealing with it. So your skepticism is kind of like you, you, your opinion is your opinion and it's not based in facts. Opinions not based on facts are pretty much worthless. But I it's have my a time. right to it. It's my time. I have a right to it. Thank it's my time. Thank you. Um, just a couple concerns on the fireworks permit with uh, using the lot. You are allowing a contractor to use that lot as well. Just be aware there could be some interference there. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, if there's a sidewalk at that point from my house, I won't need to drive there. So I appreciate if there is a sidewalk July 1st, great. You'll need less parking. Um, uh, and I think someone on the board should be looking into Officer Green still being paid on, put on paid leave. Um, I know uh, Chief Wagner is not going to provide you information, but someone needs to provide information. Why is he on paid leave? Someone needs to look into that. Um, other cities that have officers on paid leave, it's on the Channel 2 News. And it's still under investigation. So if something's under investigation, great. We can know about it. So I think the public should know. And if the board doesn't do something, maybe, you know, maybe if you don't have the time or resources, maybe call a local news outlet. And they would love to do a story on Northfield Township paying a police officer for four months. So uh, once again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Olney. <clears throat> Anyone else? Oh. Woody Hoof, 6431 Whitmore Lake Road. Okay, um, Holy Hannah, uh, we had another uh, Tetra Tech uh, prese presentation. Very poor and uh, yeah, for such a huge uh, project or future project, um, yeah, somebody in, in uh, industry would uh, be thrown out and tarred and feathered. And um, I have to uh, compliment uh, our treasurer and also uh, Mr. Darkett uh, for their questions. But in general, the board is not prepared to de discuss with uh, Tetra Tech. So um, I think the opportunity is here for you as the new board, besides having parks and records and financial reports and supervisor report, you need to get uh, highlighted, you need to get informed about maybe uh, creating an advisory subject matter expert committee just for the board to prepare you about engineering prepare you about the correct questions to ask, prepare you about what monies are available, prepare you what kind of uh, grants are available. I refer to uh, situations when we get, get through the uh, Whitmore Lake Road uh, sewer district, special sewer district, and I 
in, in all the meetings, I asked this Mr. Rugel from Tetra Tech, what is your project worth? What are the numbers? Do you have all the ducks in the row? It's on record. And he never came up with the correct answer. And it was dragged on and dragged on until we have the situation now. It is not very clear. I have to stop here because I don't have my attorney here. And you have your attorney here, so I don't go any further. But you have the opportunity to look into this to really get uh, better informed about this uh, very important project for the township. And I think there are enough expertise also on the board or on the advisor of the board from uh, Mr. Hardesty and staff. And uh, there are also, I believe, uh, people of the township, citizens of the township interested to come forward with their expertise if you ask for it. So you can ask much better educated questions and then give it out like uh, Mr. Dockett said, threw it out in the market. There's more than Tetra Tech available. And they will really fight over this huge project for the benefit of the township. If you need some help, you know my number. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? David Gordon, Helena Road. Um, I appreciate the uh, the board responding to my comments earlier, three hours ago. A um, couple things I'd like to say. Uh, I know the, there's members of the board who would like to stop discussing the manager and just move on, but I would really think that it'd be uh, respectful to answer some questions. Uh, I directed one of the uh, questions about ignoring the residents and the, all the emails that came in, and Ms. Otto said in her rebuttal that it didn't represent enough people. Well, I don't remember the last time we had 61 emails come into this community. I don't know what the percentage is that you have to get before it's respected or listened to. If it's 1%, fine. Well, then why does anybody even come up here to the microphone to talk? I represent a lot less than 1% of the voters. I guess you can just ignore anybody who comes up here because it's not a big enough percentage. I don't think that's appropriate. Number two, I asked uh, about having an assessment done, and Ms. Chick says it's about personnel and it's private. I'm not talking about getting the personnel records. I'm talking about saying, did the person who we had as a manager save us money, and what did he cost us? There has been nothing in terms of a person in the public sitting here, no documentation that says, here's the pros, here's the cons of having a manager. Here's what he saved, here's what he cost us. There's no process in place People talk to their buddies, they read something online, and they make, it, make an opinion. And then they come here and vote on their opinion. That's not a process, it's certainly not a process that informs the residents as to what's going on. Um, Ms. Bellinger, you said you had an issue, and I like, I've seen the, the emails about it, a part-time versus full-time. Um, there is no part or full-time issue in terms of, maybe it did change the idea of who was gonna run for office and who wasn't. But in terms of the job, if you look at the statute, here's what your duties are as a supervisor. Here's your duties as a manager, or as a, as a clerk, as a treasurer, and as a trustee. It doesn't say you, can, you have to do it in 40 hours, or 20 hours, or 80 hours, or 10 hours. There's, no, there's nothing on the ballot that says you're running full-time or part-time, and I think the majority of people who voted, voted to have the administration run the township. That's what their job description is statutorily. I think that's what people voted for. Um, Mr. Dockett, thank you very much for your comments. It always makes me feel welcome here when you comment about me. Um, and lastly, I, I mean, I really think that there, you should develop a process for coming to decisions as a board instead of just opinions and talking and, and saying, okay, now let's vote. Um, and I think that you should do this about the manager because otherwise you're gonna wind up hiring a new manager. You will not have had any, you don't know how well the last guy did. You don't have any, any measure. How can you do that? I would think that it might be a good idea to ask the public to have a public workshop on it. What about the idea of having somebody from U of M or EMU who's an MBA as an intern to help the supervisor? That wouldn't cost 100 grand a year. Lastly, I'm looking at the, uh, the document that you put out on uh, Michigan League to try to get people to apply. The description about our government is incorrect. 
and inaccurate. The uh, key issues and challenges mentions growth development, sewer expansion, residential development, and there's not a word about preservation, again. The description of the position says you're looking for somebody with a bachelor's degree, or maybe, maybe a master's, but not necessarily, and a candidate must have knowledge of certain fields. Uh, I think I could apply for this job based on the vagueness and you're going to pay somebody sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars plus benefits for that? That's what I'm talking about. Process. It, there's no rush to do this. The supervisor's doing the job now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Chuck Stoyer, Six Mile Road. Um, I, I heard something earlier that disturbed the living daylights out of me. The, the planning, McKenna, the planning consultants, are spending tens of thousands of dollars for the downtown development group. Was that money ever, do, does the downtown development group have a budget? Have they been given the approval by this board to spend that kind of money? The prior board, yeah. What? The prior board. Gave them a budget of no, tens of thousands no, of dollars. No, no, no. No, they 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 approved no, a con no. they approved a contract with McKenna to do the community park master plan, and that's what the funds were being used. Carte blanche. We yeah. we asked for um, some time ago and got an early snapshot of how much money we have spent. I made the prediction for the prior board that our $230,000 piece of real estate was going to cost the taxpayers a million bucks. I get the feeling maybe we're halfway to our million dollars already in terms of what's been spent on the property, the lawyer's fees, the planning group, the consultants and everybody else and all of this. I think we need to take a look at how much money we're spending on this this folly that was done in closed session to go out and buy a piece of property based on a plan, a, a parks plan that was written by Mr. Fink that said we needed lakefront property. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no one else, um, we have an opportunity for board member comments. Ms. Bellinger. A couple of comments. Um, before I uh, forget about this one, just want to get this one out there. Here at uh, the Township Hall on March 25th, our representative uh, Donna Lisinski will be here at our public safety building. I believe it's 6.30 p.m. to about 7.30. Um, it's, a, you know, it's obviously come on out and meet your representative, let her know what's on your mind. Maybe she can actually inform us as to what's going on in Lansing and so forth. So that's March 25th here at about 6.30 p.m. Um, another thing, um, I think uh, there was a talk about some skepticism with regards to um, uh, maybe the wastewater treatment issues. I believe, I could be wrong, but I think Mr. Dockett was trying to say a similar point that uh, Udo did uh, regarding um, he may be feeling at Tetra Tech as a salesman and that we perhaps should consider getting other bids or other co companies engaged in uh, looking into this and reviewing it. He wasn't questioning the, the, um, our experts that work at the plant on a day-to-day -day basis, but just questioning the perhaps motives of uh, the perceived salesman from Tetra Tech. I believe I just wanted to s clear that up. It seemed perhaps it was a misunderstanding in the word of the use of the word skeptic, skepticism. Um, uh, regarding um, uh, a comment about um, show us the assessment of how much money we saved or didn't save with a manager, uh, that's like, in one way, I don't know how one could do such a thing. How could one show that one has saved or cost more money on a project since there's only one timeline in life? Sometimes you can't always say that, oh, we could have saved had we done this. It's not always that clear cut. It just seems like possibly there's no way to accurately <coughs> quantify what could have been saved or not saved. Perhaps he did save us money. Perhaps he cost us a heck of a lot of money. 
But compared to what? We can't compare two timelines of, timelines of history. We only have the timeline that we have. I, I think some things were indeed a waste of money, but maybe there's some savings somewhere too. I, I, I'm not trying to justify one thing or another. It's just it's a question that can't be really answered, I don't believe. That's all. And thank you very much uh, for coming out. And uh, thank you all for being here. Mr. Dockett. Uh, I did not question experts. I questioned a guy who is a salesman. And he has been a salesman for 50 years. We've never had anybody except him on the sewer. We need to put, and, and he's an expert on invoice writing. That's what he's an expert on. Uh, but I, I did not question our Northville, our Northfield sewer plant people. Uh, but I, it's criminal about this guy that we, we've had for years and years doing all the sewers uh, without another bid from anybody. I would like to say something to the chief wasn't here earlier. Darlene Curtis called me tonight. Was you here? No. Yeah. Darlene Curtis called me tonight, told me that she, that Howard Fink uh, promised to give her the insert of her sign, the, the plastic Darlene Curtis sign. Okay. She wants it. Okay. She's, she told me she was 88. She wants to raise, she don't want to wait any longer. She wants it soon. Uh, and uh, the board here said, well, we'll tell Bill Wagner about it. So I, I guess you're elected, Bill. Uh, uh, again. Okay. Uh, and uh, I would like to say uh, we should buy and use local businesses and services. And uh, that's about it for tonight. I second that. Okay, Ms. Ms. Zelnock, do you have any comments tonight? I just want to thank everyone for coming out. And I do, we really have to work on having shorter agendas. Maybe having, you know, report updates and presentations on the same night might not be a good idea in the future. Mm -hmm. I know we have a lot to cover, but we, I think we need shorter agendas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Manley. Um, just again, thanks everybody for coming out and sharing your opinions and I at least value them. Thank you. Ms. Mm -hmm. Otto. Um, I did want to address um, the question in regards to Lieutenant Green, and uh, it was brought to the board's attention through closed session through a, an attorney client privilege. And uh, because it being a legal matter, we cannot share the outcome of it. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jick. It might be a legal matter, but it's not a legal matter in Northfield Township. Okay, Ms. Chick. A um, couple of things. I just wanted to, um, anybody who was interested or might want to watch the Planning Commission and the ZBA training mm -hmm. meeting has been moved to March 30th. Okay. Um, so anyone who is going to attend should let them know that you're going to be there. Also, um, I wanted to address Mr. Gordon. Either I misspoke or I misunderstood what you were saying regarding um, Mr thinks performance evaluations is what I was speaking to that because he's not an elected official, his performance evaluations are not public. It is a personnel issue. Okay. Um, and then the path, the width of the path, because it came up, I, the purpose of that was because it is a biking, walking path, mm -hmm. so they have to accommodate both walkers and bikers and mm -hmm. they don't, it people running into each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's an ADA compliance mm -hmm. issue also. Yeah. Right, uh, so that's, that's why the width of it. Um, I guess I would like to say that we are not enemies of each other, but we sure sound that way sometimes. And it would be nice if um, we could have a little more, we could have a, a, a little more kindness uh, to each other. We have our public, you know, people from, from the public come in and speak to us, and you know, they're the ones who pay the salary. I mean, we all pay our own, you know taxes, but for Pete's sakes, let's let's be kind to each other. And um, 
and the people who work for us, you know, we owe a lot of respect to also. So we have professionals come and speak with us. There's Brian Rubel, he's a professional. And let's, let's just be decent people to each other. Um, we I can, have no we can disagree, Mr. For Brian Mr. Rubel. I didn't speak while you were talking. We can disagree with each other, but let's not be nasty about it, okay? I'm not nasty. Okay. I just, I, he's I, not, he's, he's. Okay. Move, move. Yes. Go ahead. Um, so I wanted to uh, also comment on Udo Huff. He's saying that um, the board has, uh, is not prepared. I brought three different books. Uh, the Wastewater Capacity Evaluation, the Northfield Township Capital Improvement Program, and the Stormwater Management Plan. This is all documents supporting <coughs> what we've talked about probably in what, in the past four or five years? And this one yeah, and that. Uh, we look at the stuff, we've reviewed it. I have highlights, I have sticky notes, um, several presentations. We have been prepared for this. Uh, you were out in the hall talking on the phone. Okay. That's why. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's um, okay. I would like to move to adjourn since it's Madam is, Supervisor. Uh, yes. Go can ahead. I just say one thing? Quick yes. First, as this is probably my last board meeting, That's right. I would just like to oh. thank everyone on this board and all the previous boards. This has really been a, a great township to work for. They have treated us very well at the wastewater treatment plant over the years. I think it goes to speak that you had at one time five people that have had over 30 years of experience up there mm -hmm. as to not only how well we were treated, but how well we got along, the supervision that we had at the time. And so I just wanted to thank you all for that. Well, I have to say it goes to the quality of individuals that, uh, that you all have hired and that uh, Dan is going to hire too. So thank you so much. Um, and you've done Tim. a wonderful job. Yeah. yeah you're in a you. yeah, great I appreciate person. it. <laughs> Good okay. luck. Thank you. I'm, I move to adjourn. Support. Okay. Motion by Chalkley. Support by Chick. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>